Today we're going to be using the remainder um, theorem and the factor uh, theorem or factor root theorem in solving some polynomials. Now in the first set of problems we're going to be using the remainder theorem to find f of 2 of uh, the two cubic functions. So let's go ahead and start with problem number one. So in problem number one, in the very first thing that you need to do when you, whenever you're working with, this, with synthetic division is to check if you have a complete set of polynomials. Since you have a cubic function, so that means if you have a cubic function as your polynomial, you need to have a complete set of polynomial, and you need to have the cube, the squared, the first power, and the constant. And in this case, you have one, two, three, four, which is the coefficient of 1, negative 4, 5, and 3. So we have a complete set of polynomial, which means we are ready to use synthetic division to find or to verify if or to find the value of f of 2 using synthetic division. So 2 will be our divisor, and the constant will be the given um, polynomial's coefficient, which is 1, negative 4, 5, and 3. So this one will be really quick because all you need to do is to find the value of f of 2 by finding the remainder of your function because the remainder of your quotient uh, for dividing 2 with uh, the given polynomial will be your f of 2. That is according to the remainder theorem. So let's go ahead and use synthetic division. So this is our remainder using synthetic division, which means, according to the um, remainder theorem, f of 2 is equal to 5. Also, to verify if this is the correct value of your f of 2, you can substitute the value of 2 to your cubic function, and it will verify that your function will equal to 5. So that's our first set, and for our second set, we have negative x cubed, plus 6x minus 7. And notice that we have a cubic function, but we only have three terms in our given polynomial, which means there is a missing term in our standard form. So if we have an x cubed, we need an x squared, x to the first power, and constant. And in this case, we have the coefficient of x cubed, which is negative 1. We have um, x squared, which is not here, so we'll replace it with 0 x to the first is 6, and the constant of negative 7. So using synthetic division, and 2 as our divisor, we have negative 1, 0, 6, and negative 7 as our coefficient for our synthetic division. And to find the value of f of 2, we'll use synthetic division. Negative 1 times 2 is 2, or negative 2. So 0, negative 2, negative 4. This one is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, and this will equal 2, negative 3, which means f of 2 for this particular cubic function is equal to negative 3 because this is our remainder. So once again, remainder theorem is used to evaluate um, function given x, and in this case, if we substitute the value of 2 to our function, it will equal 2, negative 3. Now, for the second set of problems that we're going to be working on, we're going to be using the factor theorem or factor root theorem to find the solutions of a polynomial without any given clues, which means we are not given any of the factors, and we're going to be looking for the solutions using um, the coefficients of our first term or leading term and our last term. So in this case, for our first function, so we have a cubic function, which means we have a complete set of function right here. So the first step that you're going to be using for the first function, x cubed plus 9x squared plus 23x plus 15, is to use the coefficient of your first term and your last term. And this will be 15. This will determine the candidates of the possible solutions that we're looking for for this polynomial. Now the factors of 1 would be 1 and negative 1, and the factors of 15 would be 1 and negative 1, 3 and negative 3, and 5 and negative 5. 
which means we're going to be using 1, negative 1, 3, negative 3, 5, and negative 5 as the po possible roots of the polynomial using synthetic division. And to be able to um, verify the correct solution based on our candidates, we're going to use the synthetic division and whichever possible solution that will give us zero as our remainder will be one of the solutions or a verified solution of our polynomial. So this will be a trial and error um, procedure. We'll start with neg um, positive one. So let's see if this will give us a zero for its remainder. So our coefficients would be 1, 9, 23, and 15. And using synthetic division, 1, 10, 43, and 43 plus uh, 5 is 58, which means 1 is not a solution of our polynomial because our remainder is equal to 58. Now let's go ahead and try the second candidate, which is negative 1, and hopefully this will give us 0 as its remainder. So we have 1, 9, 23, and 15. And by synthetic division, which is equal to 15, and negative 15 will give us 0. So negative 1 has a remainder of 0, which means this is one of the solutions of our polynomial. So x equal to 1 is our solution. Now we have a cubic function, which means we have three possible roots of our polynomial so we still need to look for the other two and once you only have three terms in your um, quotient that means you can convert this into a cubic function so using a cubic function we can use factoring or quadratic formula in finding the solution of that polynomial so this will turn into an x squared an x and the constant and if we equate this to zero so we have x squared plus 8x plus 15 equal to 0, we'll be able to find the value of x. So there are two methods, or, or three, if you want to use the completing the square method techniques in finding the solutions of a quadratic equation. Now, fortunately, this particular quadratic equation is factorable, so we don't need to use the quadratic formula. So we'll use factoring to find the solutions of the um, quadratic function and the factors of 15 so they're both positive that gives you 8 when you add them up would be 3 and 5 because 3 times 5 is 15 and 3 plus 5 is 8 so therefore using the zero product property x plus 3 is equal to 0 x plus 5 is equal to 0 we'll have x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 5 so the solutions of our cubic function is 1 using synthetic division and using the factoring technique for quadratic function, we have negative 3 and negative 5. So this is, I'm sorry, this is negative 1 because this is negative 1. So negative 1, negative 3, and negative 5 would be the solutions of our cubic function using the factor theorem. Now let's go ahead and answer problem number two. So for problem number two, we'll use the first, the leading term and the last term. In this case, our first term is one and our le leading term is negative 15. So let's go ahead and find the factors of one and 15. So we have one and negative one. We have one, negative one, three, negative three, 5 and negative 5. So these are the possible factors or the factors of 1 and 15. So 1, negative 1, 3, negative 3, 5, and negative 5 will be the possible solutions of our fourth degree polynomial. And you will notice that in this particular polynomial, we have a missing term. So we have x to the fourth, x cubed, x squared x and a constant and in this case x to the fourth is 1 x cubed is 3 
x squared is negative 13 and x is negative 15. Now the constant is missing, so we'll add 0 for our constant, so it will fill the gap of the polynomial that we're solving. So using synthetic division, we'll go ahead and try 1 as the possible solution and see if it will give us a remainder of 0 if we use synthetic division. So we have 1, 3, negative 13, negative 5, and 0. And using synthetic division, negative 13 and uh, 4 is going to give us negative 9. Negative 9. And this is, I'm sorry, this one is supposed to be 15. This is 15. Um, negative 15 and negative 9 is negative 24. And negative 24 is negative 24. So we have a remainder for positive 1. So that means this one is not going to be the solution of our uh, cubic function. So let's go ahead and try the second candidate, which is negative 1. Hoping that negative 1 will give us 0 as a remainder. Once again, this is negative 15 because this is negative 15. Good thing I catch that. And let's do synthetic division. So 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2 negative 15 and 15 0 0 and 0 so notice that we have two zeros in our synthetic divisions which means we already have 0 as one of the roots because of the constant of 0 and our quotient will turn into a quadratic function. So this is now our um, solution. We have found one of them, which is x equal to negative 1. And notice that we only have three terms in our polynomial, so we can convert this into a quadratic equation. So every time you are only left with three coefficients in your synthetic division, you can um, convert it into quadratic so you can easily solve for the roots of the polynomial. So x equals negative 1 is one of the solution as well as x equal to 0 because of the constant of 0. So the two solutions that we are looking for, the other two solutions, will be determined by solving our quadratic equation. So this one will turn into a square an x and a constant so we have x squared plus 2x minus 15 and uh, this is a factorable quadratic equation as well because negative 15 you can have uh, positive 5 and negative 3 as factors of negative 15 and when you add them up will equal to 2 so you have x and x plus or minus because it's negative and negative 3 and positive 2, I mean, ne positive 5 will be our factors because 5 times negative 3 is negative 15, and 5 minus 3 is positive 2. So using the zero product property, x plus 5 is 0, and x minus 3 is 0, the third root will be x equals negative 5, and x equal to. Three. So the solutions of our fourth degree polynomial will be 0, negative 1, uh, negative 5, and 3. So this is how we use the factor theorem in uh, finding the solutions of a polynomial.